Hi, Dr. Alex here, and breaking news, the Doctor Season 12 audiobook is now released. But wait, I hear you cry, hasn't that been out for years? And it is true that it began broadcast on YouTube way back in 2019, which does, yeah, mean it's basically five years old. And it was then released in print form on Kindle, paperback and hardback through Amazon in 2020. Again, some time ago, I'll grant you. Until it was finally published as an audiobook in 2022 through Audible. But after that point, 2022, Audible said they were going to send it to their other audiobook partners for publication. Since then, in the intervening, what, two plus years, I have not seen The Doctor Season 12 appear on any other audiobook outlets. And so, having given them as much benefit of the doubt as I feel I could reasonably do, I went to Find Away Voices and I've published The Doctor Season 12 as an audiobook through them as well. And so I'm pleased to announce that it is available as of the time of recording anyway, through Spotify, Kobo, Nook, Libro FM, and, of course, Google Play. As I mentioned in a previous video, I'm probably going to put The Doctor Season 14 out straight through Findaway Voices and have it go out through Audible at the same time because Findaway Voices allows me to do that. And between now and the release of Season 14, through all the outlets, I'll also put The Doctor Season 13 out through Findaway Voices, so that will also appear on Spotify, Google Play, and all the other outlets. By the way, related to Season 14, the next episode will be out this Saturday, Episode 9 by Lonnie Webb, The Amazing Death at the Edge of the Universe. But after that, we'll take a small break for the summer holidays, so I can recharge my batteries get the last five episodes done, which basically consist of an enormous three-part story, followed by the finale for the entire series, indeed all three series, with a two-part episode by myself. But until that episode comes out, you'll have the rest of this video to enjoy, in which I will give you, as I usually do, the audio sample that goes with this book, The Doctor Season 12. In this case, I think I'll use the Libro FM version, having already used a Spotify and a Google Play version in two previous videos. Why not give them a try? So, I hope you enjoy the free sample that's available for The Doctor Season 12, as presented on Libro FM's website. And until the next video, whatever that may be, to all my listeners, watchers, readers and subscribers, take care. What the hell is this? He exploded furiously and Scottishly. This, being the main console room, had a bizarre appearance, at least to anyone familiar with it. And yet it was also somehow familiar, to anyone bizarre enough to know it. It still sported a two-tier design. Gantry at a higher level, where the main doors lay, with stairs leading down from there to the central area of the previously mentioned console. But this was where the similarity with the Doctor's most recent recollections ended abruptly. The first problem the Doctor was having was just how bright everything was. Every wall, stair and banister was a brilliant and unforgiving white. Each wall was decorated with sunken circular roundels, an aesthetic he was obviously familiar with, but not for a very long time, and not on such a scale. The main console itself was a similar mind-bending contortion of old and new in a sickening collision of style and size. Its proportions were of the imposing, looming vastness with which he was familiar, but the panels and switches were of a much flatter, less baroque, more brutalist nature. The slowly pumping central column, while vast, now had what appeared to be flat perspex sides, encasing strange rods and plates of metal and glass. It was reminiscent of some terribly hip and groovy modern art installation set into undulating motion. It was from behind the imposing bulk of the main console assembly that the figure of a white-haired, elderly gentleman moved into view. This the first doctor began with an air of weary patience, is your TARDIS. Is it? the doctor snapped back, gesturing around him. Are you sure? Yes, well, I shall always think of it as mine, naturally, but yes, this is the TARDIS contemporaneous with you. My TARDIS is nearby. I understand your confusion, though. I do hope you don't mind, but I took the liberty of redecorating a little. It was also dark, baroque, and, well, unnecessary. However, I left the layout and dimensions set in accordance with your current grandiose fetishes. 
I'm still Scottish, and a man. Are you Scottish? I don't recall ever being that good with accents. I must say that in the somewhat limited interactions we have had, you always sounded to me a little like that incarnation of ours with the floppy hat and the ridiculous scarf. Nonsense! I've never sounded like that! That is an absurd statement, not worthy of us. And of course we resemble a human. But if you'd care to check your pulse, I think you'll find yourself quite, quite Time Lord. I thought I regenerated into a woman! Ha! How ludicrous! Ludicrous! What reason would you have to say that? Reasons, you say? Oh, let me count the ways. Firstly, I do not recall ever harbouring a desire to be anything other than who I am, sex-wise, I mean. Never once caught myself wishing Susan could call me grandmother, nor even for a moment experienced the desire to learn the art of sucking eggs. I know we change from regeneration to regeneration, but there is a certain core which remains, no matter how far you may wish to run from it, to run from yourself. Secondly... Have you any idea how difficult it would be to achieve such a sex change? Well, the sheer number and complexity of treatments prior to transition would be highly disruptive to the business of everyday life. It would be time-consuming, requiring many resources, and would be difficult to conceal from others if someone were to conceal both the desire and the process of such a transformation. Not only would the transformation be a little unusual, but to conceal it would put it into a whole new category of oddity. Imagine, say if some high-ranking official on Gallifrey had been conducting pre-transition procedures in secret for their own peculiar reasons? What if they were then struck down in the course of their duties and regenerated in front of some hapless palace guard? Can you imagine the confusion and bewilderment on the face of this poor guard, utterly unprepared for this most atypical and difficult of regenerations? You would be completely thrown by it. That's an awfully specific example. Is it? I'm sure it's purely hypothetical. The central column began to rise and fall more quickly, lights flashing within. But before it had even completed one cycle, there was a crash and an ear-shredding screech as metal rending upon metal. One viewscreen showed an image which only a Time Lord could easily interpret. The universe had shattered. Instead of one space-time, the universe was in shards, sections of space and time broken asunder, and while still close, slowly and surely drifting apart. A communication screen now struggled hazily to life. Barely discernible through the snowstorm of static, the First Doctor's face swam into view. He was only able to utter one sentence before the connection was lost forever. My dear Doctor, did you leave something undone? Then the Twelfth Doctor was utterly alone in his TARDIS, adrift in a splinter of space and time. Masters, mistresses, the doctor requires materials in order to maintain the TARDIS and ensure continued functionality. He similarly requires carbon-based comestibles to sustain his own biological functions and existence. Master would never say this, but he requires aid beyond that supplied by this unit in order to acquire these. To aid the doctor in his various tasks and creations, this can be most effectively achieved via Patreon or Substack subscriptions.
or through donations directly to PayPal, or if you desire physical goods in return for your contributions, written accounts of my travels with the doctor are also available on Amazon. Links are in the description below. Thank you, masters, mistresses.